Everybody, this is Gabe I'm doing a little chat this week on customer success or sales process on knowing your customers. Uh, a lot of customers in uh, sales process get sold something and then kind of left behind. You know, a lot of salespeople will, will sell something and then either pass on the process to somebody else, a support person or a training person or say your used car salesperson. You send it over to, you know, your service department. Once the car is sold, it's not your deal anymore. Deal with it. Um, let's take that, take a used car example or a software example. Once you sell something, how do you know your customer's happy and still going to be engaged with, uh, not just your product, but your brand, uh, the goal to be a, a successful salesperson isn't just to sell something to a person one time. It's to make them a successful fan of your brand or product. So they come back again and buy again and tell their friends. So they buy again and definitely make sure that the people are happy enough so that they're not going to. Uh, you know, turn the corner and say that say bad things about your product or your brand or you as a salesperson. Importantly, uh, as part of that process is knowing your customer after the sales process is how do you track that customer? Do you send out surveys? Do you do NPS scores? So uh, and net promoter score surveys to know if that customer would actually, you know, uh, refer more of their friends or family to you as a salesperson or product or brand. There's a lot of a uh, lot of information around NPS scoring, a lot of information around surveying. It doesn't have to be a really complex process. I mean, the whole idea is that you get to know your customer and how they felt about your product. Um, if you're renewing it, renewing uh, a software product, uh, how they're feeling before you go into that renewal process. If you just sold them something, maybe after training, how they're feeling, and then how they're feeling at some kind of midpoint. Uh, a lot of ways to go about this. You can have you know Facebook postings asking you know how people like your product, how they use it, different ways. Um, Google is a super easy way to set up a Google form. You can set up a survey on Google where you ask people, you know, on scale of zero to 10, how common would it be that you would refer us to friends or family? How much do you like us? A lot of complex process that you can get into with different software tools out there where you have, you know, an automated, if it is an application in app uh, prompt with, you know, how do you like us? Would you refer us to friends and family? Asking people to score you on zero to 10. Um, in past experience, you know, as a banker at Wells Fargo, we would ask people, you know, um, how do we rate on a survey, say zero to five, uh, five being good, zero being bad, because we knew that, you know, at some point they were going to get called by someone on the surveying team and asked how we did in that customer experience interaction. Uh, in previous software companies I've been in, we've had in-app, you know, uh, capture of that net promoter score. So how do we do as, as a user, um, which would go to users of all different levels. The important part is, are you capturing uh, how your customers are feeling about you and how are you doing that? And are you doing it on a regular basis? Um, you know, almost as important as how you're capturing how your customers are feeling about you is how do you use that information? You know, do you have it in easily, easily digestible way to look at? Do you share that with maybe your support team if you're a mid-level person? Do you share it with the C-level people uh, if you're sharing it up in that direction? And what do you do with that information? Um, you know, there's a lot of different things to do with it. Most importantly, though, is capturing that information. And like I said, there's a lot of ways to do it. Do it through, you know, Facebook or social or have a Google form or embedded applications um, or simple phone calls. Just just if you're a, if you're a you know, salesperson where you sell one off products like like I said, cars, designer cars or, you know, whatever your process or product is. Um, how are you capturing that? And just make sure that you are capturing how your customers are feeling in some recorded fashion. Uh, it'll help you as you progress through your sales career in whatever product you're selling. Um, and you can pass that information on to other people that interact with customers. And, uh, you know, lo and behold, if you get to the point where a customer doesn't want to renew with you because they weren't happy, at least maybe you've got some of those points captured at where they were happy with your product or process. I uh, can go back to that and maybe that'll even help you in the sales process. Maybe not. Uh, but, you know, you can see, you know, where maybe there was a foul and th people decided that they weren't happy with uh, what was going on. And I guess on the, the turn side of, you know, making sure your customers are happy, if they're not happy and those surveys come out saying that they're not happy and they didn't like something, um, doing a really in-depth conversation as much as I'll give you that feedback is super important. Um, almost more important than the feedback on customers that love your product is what don't they love? What could you do better? What could make the process better? Um, what could you do to make them happier with what you're doing or what you're offering the services? Um, I know, I know one example I have is so, um, a, a car place I buy cars from here locally, they didn't have a certain car that somebody in my family wanted. So they said, Hey, can you go look at the, for this car? And, uh, they actually looked out to five different auction sites to try to find, sent people out to find the specific car for my family. Uh, they couldn't find it. 
And so my aunt and uncle ended up purchasing a different kind of car. It was similar from another place. Uh, but this particular dealership, uh, you know, my family certainly had nothing bad to say about them. In, in fact, the opposite. They said, yeah, they went out of their way to try to find what we were looking for. And we ended up purchasing somewhere else, but we'd certainly refer business to them in the future. So um, lots of ways to look at it. A lost sale opportunity or lost renewal with that specific instance. But because uh, the place, the, the product and brand went out of their way to make that sure that customer uh, felt supported, felt happy and knew that they did all they could. Uh, still referring friends and family to that that car company down the road. So important things to take away, know your customer, follow up with them, uh, make sure that you've got some metrics for watching if they're happy um, and how things are going. And then how do you respond to that? How do you respond to uh, positive feedback on that you're doing well and that things are going well? And how do you respond to negative feedback that maybe things didn't go well or you don't have what they needed? Um, and, and what are you going to do to either win that customer back in the future or make sure that they still want to keep referring business to you? So lots of things there. Um, but the biggest thing, you know, as part of this too, is empathy in the process. Know your customer, uh, feel their pain points, know what you can do to help them, talk to them, have open communication and, uh, you know, start by taking, uh, data points down as basically as you can. Hope this helps and gives you guys some insight into, you know, my process and what I do. And um, I'd love to hear what kind of tools and tips you guys use for managing customers or sales process and getting that feedback on how customers feel about you as a, as a brand or product or even individual salesperson. Cheers.